Welcome to Developing Expert Power for Impact, presented by Elite Leadership Coaching by Andrea. I am your hostess and facilitator, Andrea White. I'm a leadership and business coach uh, for the past 20 plus years. I serve corporate and nonprofit professionals and small business owners who struggle or feel stuck, unclear, uh, and in many cases, not supported to increase their leadership intelligence, influence, income, position, and power. So they really take uh, their careers in their own hands, and we work together uh, to elevate their leadership uh, skills and knowledge, uh, which in turn impacts their influence, income, position, and power. And most often I work with clients through one-on-one -on -one coaching, uh, online small groups, uh, self-study courses, live events, and keynote presentations. Before we get into our content for today, I wanted to share a little bit of a thought with you about leadership. Uh, that I hope that we can agree upon. Um, you know, quite frequently when people think about leaders or leadership, they often think about a, a person in a position over people or over a program or over a team or over a business. Uh, and having responsibility for people and projects does not automatically make you a leader. Leadership is really a process rather than a position. Uh, leaders identify what has to be done. They influence others to achieve it. They make sure that the job is done well and build an even stronger team. And so I thought that that was important to share because depending upon where you are in your career right now, uh, you may not see yourself as a leader. And it's important to understand that leadership is a decision first. And we'll actually talk a little bit more about this um, in a couple of slides. Um, leadership is a decision first. It is not necessarily a position uh, first. And so you are, um, uh, you know, making good steps toward making the decision first. Uh, to increase your leadership knowledge and skills. Okay, so just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, so what are we going to talk about in this uh, course? We are going to cover the different types of power. We are going to talk specifically about expert power and its definition and why it's so important, how to build, maintain, and use expert power. And then um, if you have listened to any of the other courses by now, uh, you will also notice that it is a professional practice of mine to not only help people develop their knowledge and skills, but also to develop action plans around putting that new knowledge and skill into, uh, into practice, into their you know, daily professional or personal life. And so at the very, actually throughout this particular course, we'll do action planning throughout as opposed to at the end. Um, and so we should be done in about, uh, about 30 minutes or so. So what is power? Let's get on the same page about that. Because people have been studying the causes uh, of the differences for a long time, uh, different types of leaders and the different types of power uh, have been studied for a long period of time. And um, some of the sources of power um, are actually highly effective and motivating, while other sources of power leave people feeling unmotivated, uninspired, are even oppressed. And so um, as we talk about in this course, as well as in the influence course as a part of this bundle, finding a really good balance um, is really important because if you tilt the scales uh, either way too much, 
you can actually do damage in your leadership role. So, you know, people have been studying this for a really long time, and there are really um, several views about what makes a good leader, of course. And I'm sure you have uh, read a lot about different types of leaders, different types of leadership styles. Uh, there are two things that I want to throw into the mix. Um, and these two things I think we all can agree um, as it relates to leadership. First, it's about much more than being responsible for other people, which we just finished talking about a second ago. And leadership is really a role that you can choose. Uh, and I think this is really important because sometimes people are promoted without really any consideration as to whether the person is actually really interested in being a leader. And so you first have to choose and decide that leadership is something, uh, a role that you are wanting to participate in. Um, otherwise, no matter how much leadership intelligence, influence, power, uh, goal setting, dealing with difficult people, and all the other things that come along with leadership, no matter how much of those things and skills you have, if it's really not something that you choose for yourself, then it's going to be really difficult to be successful, and your team may suffer, you may suffer, and unfortunately, your organization may suffer as well. Uh, and so that, those are two things that we really know for sure about leadership. It's about more than being responsible for other people, and it's a role, role that you can choose. So this means that you can be a leader in your very own way, whether you're currently in a form of leadership role or not. Uh, and so during our next uh, several minutes together, um, I hope to encourage you to think about how you can start using expert power as the foundation of your approach to leadership. And so there are a few things that are really important before we get into the nuts and bolts of expert power. Uh, the first is just a little bit about power basics. Uh, you can learn to be a successful leader uh, by developing effective leadership skills and behaviors, but how do you know which approach you should use? Uh, and so as we look at the seven bases of power, uh, and then we break those down into informal and formal bases, uh, that's one method uh, that can help you to know uh, which approach to use uh, because research has determined that of the seven bases of power, um, whether you select informal bases of power or formal bases of power, have a direct impact on uh, the type of leader uh, you will be. So let's look at those a little more closely. So there are formal, uh, the formal basis of power. Uh, many people in positions of authority uh, will possess these. Uh, but that's not enough to make them leaders. These sources of power are not inspirational or motivational, so they are unlikely to actually be permanent. Uh, and so they may work for a person for a little while, um, but at some point, um, you know, they, they aren't going to work in terms of being able to get people to function as a team, to follow you as a leader, to be inspired and motivate, motivated toward the common goal. Um, so there will likely be negative consequences for people who rely on uh, these formal bases of power too much. And in particular, for those people who actually misuse these. True leaders do not necessarily have to have formal power. People can inspire you to work hard and can make a real difference without having it. Uh, these individuals likely derive most of their power from informal sources, which we'll take a look at in just a second, although they may also have 
formal power in terms of title and the ability to a reward. So even though a person may have one or more of these formal bases of power, they don't really rely on them um, to, you know, for team performance, for team motivation, um, and to meet goals. So legitimate power comes from the leader's position. Uh, and so it gives them the right to ask others to do something. Uh, reward power comes from controlling things like salary increases, promotions, and other rewards that team members value. Co coercive power uh, comes from the ability to punish, uh, to discipline others, um, et cetera. And then information power comes from um, when a person has exclusive access to information. Uh, and so the information may be available to only them or a very small circle of people. So let's take a look at the informal bases of power. These informal sources of power are really uh, the most compelling. Uh, charisma is often a naturally occurring trait. It's quite difficult to learn, although you can go a long way by presenting yourself just well. Um, and so that would mean that, you know, the majority of the time you are positive, you have high spirit, you have great energy, um, you're excited about the things um, that you're undertaking. Uh, so even if it's not a natural trait for you, uh, if you just sort of, you know, put on a good hat every day uh, and decide to be positive, encouraging, you know, uh, demonstrate initiative, uh, those things can go a long way for you as well <clears throat> if you lack charisma as a natural trait. Referent power stems from team members doing what the leader wants because they value um, her approval or his approval and they want to be more like that person. Um, and referent, referent power can come from things like just treating people well, setting a great example, um, having integrity, uh, and just overall in general behaving in a way um, you know, where your team members will want to um, emulate your behavior. And so it's contagious. Uh, and so that's really what we're looking for. Expert power is power gained from having the knowledge, experience, and ability to solve problems and make really good decisions. Um, expert power also, you know, can come from having team members have confidence and trust and belief that you have the knowledge and skills and experience to lead them toward the common goal. And so you can develop expert and referent power much more easily. Uh, when you demonstrate these two power bases, you have actually taken the first steps toward be becoming um, what's called a transformational leader. And perhaps you've heard about that or read about transformational leaders. Transformational leaders are leaders who have integrity. They inspire people with a shared vision of the future. They set very clear goals. They motivate team members to achieve, uh, to achieve those goals. And they communicate uh, quite effectively. So really quickly, I want, to, I want you to think about people who have used informal power in your life. Think about these points. What do you think their sources of power were? Now that you kind of have names to maybe what you experienced or names for the behaviors uh, that you witnessed. Um, what were their sources of power? Was it charisma, reference power, expert power? 
um, or even um, any of the formal um, power bases that we talked about a second ago. And then I want you to think about their level of effectiveness on, on the team's impact and performance. Is there a pattern of the type of power that was the most effective uh, when you think back and now that you have sort of some formal titles? Um, was one type of power more effective than the others? I want you to think about that. It's very likely that the people uh, with more than one type of informal power were influential leaders, regardless of whether they also had formal power or not. It's also likely that they made you feel good as a result of their leadership. Now I want you to think about your own sources of power. Remember, when you're currently, whether you're currently in a leadership role or not, you do not have power. Write down the personal sources of power you are currently using well. Are they formal or informal? Are there informal bases of power you want to develop even more? Um, and so hopefully you have like a professional planner or a professional journal. Uh, and so I want you to just jot down a couple of notes about any of the bases of power that you would like to develop even further. And we're gonna do a little bit of an exercise to help you with that. Okay, so looking at the table on the, sli on the slide here, I want you to think about your own sources of power. Remember, um, whether you're currently in a leadership role or not, you do have power. Uh, I want you to write down the personal sources of power you are currently using well. Are there informal bases of power you want to develop even more? Uh, I want you to mark those. Uh, you can actually mark them, you know, on if you've printed the PowerPoint slides or use your professional planner or journal to write down uh, which of those informal bases of power you want to develop even more. Uh, you should be able to see that you do have power. So now you need to learn how to build your expert power and maximize your effectiveness as a leader. Okay, so if you have, if you looked at the definition of legitimate, um, the legitimate power base, have you used it before? Yes or no? Uh, and yes or no, would you like to further develop it? And so just go down the list and um, answer use before and answer whether you would like to further develop or not. Okay, so to build your expert power, uh, team members can look up to you for direction and support. They have to believe that you know what you're doing. Uh, and that's why having expert power is so important if you wanna be an effective leader. When people see you as an expert, they trust you. Uh, along with trust in your skill comes trust in your judgment. As an expert team mem as an expert, team members will come to you with their problems. Um, they may, you know, they'll believe that you know how to produce really good results. Uh, and they'll also trust that you have this, the wisdom needed to reach the end goal. All of this will lead your team to respect you and your abilities. As a whole, expert power helps you to influence uh, people's behavior. Uh, and it helps to motivate them to do great work. What's more, expert leaders earn their team members respect, so you'll likely experience fewer people problems than non-expert leaders. 
So um, in building your expert, uh, expert power, you want to think about, you know, where your current expertise lies, um, where is there room for growth uh, in your expertise, uh, and where do you want to become an expert. A part of this exercise, you should also identify what you don't know, what you don't know as it relates to um, maybe your professional role or um, your career expectations, your role expectations. Uh, is there anything that you don't know? Uh, it's always important to think about the things that you want to know, what will help you to be better uh, in tandem with um, trying to figure out what you don't know. And sometimes that may require asking other people. So hopefully you have uh, some positive champions around you that you can engage in conversation that can give you feedback in terms of, you know, when they work with you or um, work on a project with you, you can ask them, you know, what is my expertise from your perception? What do I need to know more of? from your perception. Ask other people. Um, you also want to understand your current skills. Uh, it's important when you know your areas of expertise, it's much easier to identify leadership roles where you will actually thrive. And I think that's a no-brainer. You know, you don't necessarily want to try to be a leadership, uh, be in a leadership role uh, in you know, finance, and, you know, you are really a mechanical engineer. Uh, you know, you are more likely to thrive based on your current expertise. And I, I think that's, you know, common sense. Okay, so building your expert power. Uh, think about how you would like your career to develop and what expertise you'll need to make that happen. List as many activities as you can, including if you need additional education and training, and think about how much experience you'll need. Uh, you can gain expertise um, by volunteering for projects, working in professional organizations, of course, and even on um, you know, community projects. Those are great opportunities to grow a particular skill set. Uh, and so again, you know, if you've printed this out, you can use the table that's on this slide. Or if you have a professional planner or journal, you can jot down some notes. You know, what's the expertise you need now? What's the expertise you'll need and need for the future? And so that may mean that you may need to do a little bit of research about the trends in your field, um, you know, what's projected to happen in your field in the future, and then based on that information and that research, what expertise do you need to develop uh, to trend in the right way? And then uh, the third thing you want to think about is the expertise that you want. Um, and, you know, also including things that you want to do will make sure that you have sort of your own internal inspiration and motivation um, to keep going. Okay, so there is a little bit of action planning exercise for you to do, and you can either stop um, the video now uh, to do this particular exercise or come back to it. Uh, at the very end. So what's your expertise? Uh, where are you already a, a, uh, an expert? Um, and, and then I want you to, you know, in addition to any additional experience, education, awards that you may need, um, I want you to also jot down um, some ideas 
about how you will appropriately promote your expertise. And so I'm, uh, if you have listened to um, any of the other courses in this bundle, uh, one of the things that I spent a little bit of time on is just really striking a really good balance. So you don't want to be pesty or a stalker or coming across as a know-it-all. Uh, you have to find a really good balance in, you know, sort of self-promotion, sharing your expertise, um, you know, sharing your knowledge, um, inspiring other people, uh, perhaps even serving as a formal or informal mentor to maybe someone that is your junior is an appropriate way to promote your expertise. Uh, so striking a really good balance, certainly not coming across as a know-it-all uh, because then you'll lose some of your power because you have actually, you know, irritated or agitated or frustrated uh, some of the people around you. You know, so when you've made the effort to become an expert, it's only fair that you've re um, that you're recognized for it. If you have a professional qualification and a relevant discipline, if you've held a high ranking position, if you've worked for a very successful company, or if you've been given a prestigious award, then people should know about it. Uh, and then, of course, you know, there's a really fine line between bragging and informing and what's appropriate in one organization or on one team or one business culture may not be in another. So however you promote your image of expertise, uh, you want to do so in moderation. Uh, you can do things like hang your awards and certificates in your office or write articles for um, uh, your business sector, uh, but, you know, that may be a good way to show your expertise and you're not necessarily dangling it in front of um, the people that you work with every day, but you're really um, sharing your expertise with more than your organizational um, team members. Uh, reminding people regularly that you graduated top of your class at Harvard, for instance, or, you know, your college may not be so effective. Uh, and so remember, you can't be an expert in everything. And earning a credential doesn't necessarily make you an expert. So don't claim to be knowledgeable about things that you are not. This will only damage your credibility and cast doubt on your legitimate areas of expertise. And so those are, that's lots of consideration um, as you begin to uh, do some of your action planning and reflection on your current areas of expertise where you need to grow, where's their opportunity, and then also promoting your expertise. So there's lots uh, to consider. So let's talk a little bit about once you have it um, sort of all settled out, how to use your expert power. Uh, and so um, before we get into these three bullet points, it's really important uh, as a leader to also recognize that you never really get to the end. Like you, um, a leader is always developing influence. They're always developing their expert power. They're always developing, you know, how to set goals. They're always learning more about you know, um, team performance, organizational performance. And so even once you, if, you know, when you reach the C-suite or senior level executive management, uh, you want to recognize that even once you get into that type of position, you always still want to reflect on how you can become better. Okay, so there are three key ways that you can use your expert power to influence and motivate others. And then as you move in different layers of leadership, 
how you incorporate these three techniques may be different. Um, so let's talk a little bit about staying informed. <clears throat> As an expert, you can make use of rational persuasion, logical arguments and facts to convince others to join or agree with you. However, this relies on objective information, so it's critical that you stay up to date with what's happening in your projects and in your area of expertise. Otherwise, what will happen is people may question your expertise and then that could compromise your ability to influence them. And so that's something that we want to avoid. And so again, it's all about never getting comfortable always learning, always growing, always reading more, always you know, reaching out to people in your area of expertise. Uh, and then that in turn helps to maintain your expert power. Remain connected. Uh, you must always remain approachable and connected to your team members. Um, if you distance yourself from them, um, you'll likely stop sharing and communicating your expertise, and that can make it very difficult for you to influence them as you won't be aware of what will motivate or inspire them. What's more, be humble in your approach, be patient, take time to coach when people on your team need it, and as far as, uh, as you sensibly can, let them work out solutions for themselves and keep ownership of their ideas um, and so it's really important to understand when you need to jump in when you need to sort of stand in the wings and watch uh, when you need to offer assistance uh, leadership is also just always about balance as well uh, and sometimes you'll get it right and sometimes you you know you may not get it right um, but you're always looking to strike a balance. Um, staying confident in crisis, uh, you want to be confident in a crisis uh, or being confident in a crisis can be quite challenging. When a crisis occurs, uh, your team is going to look to you for direction. And as an expert, people expect you to know what to do and you must meet that expectation in order to maintain your expert status. Uh, in many crises, you don't have to find a perfect solution. A good one is often enough. In fact, the final outcome of your decision can sometimes be less important than your willingness to take the lead. Uh, and so in times of crisis, uh, as a leader, informal or not, or formal leader or not, you don't want to disappear. You know, you want to be available, present, taking initiative, asking what do people need, asking people what questions they have, asking people what ideas they have, sharing um, uh, any problems that are occurring, and pulling people in to solve those problems and then divvying up the work. Um, what you don't want to do is to disappear, to panic, um, or um, not know what to do. Okay, so we talked a little bit about using your expertise. Uh, so now let's just um, talk a little bit about maintaining it. Uh, there are really two vital things I want you to know as it uh, pertains to maintaining your expertise. Many people think that leaders um, have to know everything, but that's really not true. And, you know, wow, that's a lot of pressure, right? Effective leaders uh, know when to call on other experts for their opinions. If you try to appear expert at something you're not, Others will quickly see through that, and then they may start to question your expertise in areas that you really do have knowledge and expertise in. And so um, you want to avoid that. Um, again, 
no matter where you are in your leadership um, development, uh, it's always about getting better, getting better, reading, uh, talking to people, asking questions. Um, that is really critical to maintain your expertise and credibility and power. As an expert, you may know a lot about a subject or task, but that doesn't mean that you're better or smarter than others. Always take care to ensure that people feel comfortable expressing ideas and questions. Expert power is a positive source of power, so you must take uh, make sure that you support your team members, protect their self-esteem, and avoid making them feel inferior. And so, you know, for instance, if you are the smartest person on your team and you're the leader of the team, you don't have to wield that like a heavy sword over everyone's head. You can actually pull people into the conversation, um, allow other people to lead the conversation, um, ask people to offer up their solutions, um, and then you can, you know, put in your ideas as well. Uh, you know, sometimes that may mean that you don't speak first, uh, that you allow other people to speak first. Um, you know, it's really, there we go again with that dance and finding really good balance. And so to wrap up, um, power and influence really go hand in hand. And one of the best ways to become an effective leader is to build your expert power. Uh, when you lead without expert power, it's much more difficult um, for you to get buy-in from other members and to, and to influence them as well. So expert power is a really um, a great choice as a power base. Um, when you use expert power as your power base or you use it to complement uh, other formal and informal sources of power, you can build on the trust and respect that your expertise provides. You can positively impact your team and you can also improve the work uh, that you are doing. Start building and using expert power right away uh, and you'll be much more effective as a leader as a result. So this concludes this particular course uh, in the course bundle. Uh, and uh, as always, I encourage you to schedule a free uh, discovery call so that we can discuss your leadership development goals uh, and the results possible uh, when we work together. You can click the link that's uh, on the slide and it will take you immediately to my calendar and uh, we can schedule a, a great time to talk. Um, uh, to talk about your goals and how we can work together to get there. And finally, here is my contact information. You can, you have my webpage at the top, my social media that I use the most, um, Facebook and Instagram at Elite Coach Andrea, where I provide uh, really, you know, quick, tips that you can put into practice quickly around leadership. And then if you have any additional questions or concerns about uh, the module, you can send me an email at andrea at elite leadership coaching.org. Uh, thank you.